Fire! Welcome! This is a video that I've been intending to do for years now and I just thought today's the day. Loads to show in this particular part of my music collection. I think the vast majority, almost all of it, I'm sure I've never shown on this channel before. Maybe apart from an exception or two, but we'll see. It's my Joy Division and New Order and related DVD collection. There's three DVDs that I'm not showing in this video and it's the three that have come in the Definitive Edition box sets for Movement, Power, Corruption and Lies and Low Life. I've shown those on the channel previously when I unboxed those box sets and it would have been a bit of a faff me digging the DVDs for those out but um, just imagine that they're included in this. They've got live performances. I think the Low Life one has got the Play at Home documentary from, what was that, 85 or 84? 85, I think, which I did used to have on a bootleg or copied DVD, but um, I threw that copy out when uh, I got a much better quality one in the low life box set so yeah but other than that this is a complete and comprehensive look at all my joy division and new order dvds nothing on blu-ray new order are a band who haven't really sort of upgraded to blu-ray yet for anything a couple of the things that i'll show early on actually um i could and indeed i did upgrade to blu-ray but then i downgraded again but i'll explain but let's just get going but i'll get going and already i'll deviate from what this is meant to be because although this is meant to be looking at dvds i want to show a cd first but this fits in better in this sort of video than in like a music related video because this isn't a music cd it's maximum new order the unauthorized biography of new order a cd audio biog it says so yeah it's an audio documentary got different chapters down there so uh, produced by chromedreams.co.uk uh, really nicely produced audio doc this uh, chrome dreams I think are fairly well respected in these kind of semi-official audio and video documentary for music bands and artists that they do in fact I think uh, a Joy Division DVD I've got coming up is another Chrome Dreams production so they're probably better known for the video stuff and I think they do get sort of licensed to use music to an extent but I mean obviously it says on it it's unauthorised this isn't a proper New Order product but it's nice comes in this slip case here I won't spend too long on this I just thought it'd be a nice thing to show you really uh, I think that booklet there actually folds out into a poster pretty good stuff that although I've not listened to this in donkey's years so perhaps if I listen to it again soon I might change my mind well I thought I'd show you that just to kick us off now onto the DVDs proper and I had to start with my favorite film of all time don't let me start waffling on about 24-hour party people because I just won't shut up really and it's meant I'm meant to be covering a lot here I've not counted how many DVDs there is here but it looks a lot to me 2002 it came out brilliant comedy I know some real factory nerds don't like this or they just say well it's too frivolous or there's too much bending the truth or just outright you know changing the narrative sort of thing but just as a kind of portrayal of a hedonistic time really um, it's my favorite film of all time it always will be now ironically enough I did a few years ago upgrade my copy to blu-ray and I sent this DVD this very one to uh, my old sodcast co-host Jason Clo here because um, I wanted him to see the film and I'd upgraded to the blu-ray the blu-ray's crap no subtitles on it for one and there's so many less extras than what's on here this if you can see this version particularly it's a two disc version look if you see this anywhere this is the one to get this dvd did the blu-ray even look any better than the dvd maybe marginally but i was so disappointed because i've been waiting for that to get a blu-ray release for years and when it did it was so bare bones so what i did i asked jason to swap and he kindly sent me this back and I sent him the Blu-ray, which presumably he's watched, but he never told me if he liked it or not. But I'm not going to talk any more about 24-hour party people. People know 
who know me know that it's my favourite movie of all time. Speaking of great movies and great biopics, here's another one. Uh, it's also out on Blu-ray, obviously. I never bothered upgrading because I'm just happy with this DVD copy here. But it's the Joy Division biopic, Control. Um, it stars, who plays Ian Curtis here, Sam Riley, of course. And it also stars Samantha Morton. Oh, what's his face from Line of Duty? Plays Tony Wilson in this. And his name's escaped me. Maybe I'll put it on screen. Uh, I've got a feeling I might need to make a few annotations here in this video. Yeah, this is great. Obviously, a lot more of a sober prospect than 24-hour party people. And it covers, you know, a, a relatively short period of time. That sort of mid-70s to early 80s period of Ian Curtis's life and career. Fantastic stuff, that. Right, we move on to some general factory-related documentaries and stuff now. Factory records, of course. And um, here's one that I is one of my personal favourites. I've re-watched this quite a few times. Uh, Shadow Players, Factory Records and Manchester Post Punk, 1978-81. to This is a documentary film by James Nice. It's sort of an accompaniment to his book of the same name, which is an excellent history of Factory Records. Um, I speak to James every now and again and one thing I remember asking him a few years ago was will you ever do a follow-up documentary to Shadow Players like Shadow Players 2 that covers more of Factory because while his book covers the start to, to Factory's demise in 1992 obviously this DVD goes only up to 1981 and he said you know, he thought about it and in a way would have liked to, but a lot of people who contributed to this have sadly passed away. People like Tony Wilson, Larry Cassidy from Section 25. Although what all this is really is just a selection of talking heads, like interviews. It's just done really well and it uses, I think, some proper music by New Order. Either, yeah, it'll be on the end, on the end credits, I think. And of course, they were able to license the um, factory logos and motifs from uh, Peter Saville himself, who is another one who's interviewed on here. I mean, um, you know, this covers everything to do with the early part of factory, including a lot of the lesser known bands and their expansion into Europe, particularly the Benelux region, of course. If you see that about or you go looking for it on online, it's a big recommendation that from me, if you've not seen it. Uh, it's by LTM, who is James Nice's, essentially his record label, where he puts out a lot of factory records reissues. Obviously not from, you know, Joy Division and New Order, or even Happy Mondays, really, but um, from some of the more niche and lesser known or lesser selling acts from factory. Really like that, Shadow Players. Here's one that, although it kind of looks like it's a, an official DVD, well, it does to me anyway, maybe not to you, uh, this is a copy, it's unofficial. Uh, it's Factory Records, the rise and fall of the most influential and successful independent label in British rock music history. And I'm reading the bump on the top of the back there for some reason. Uh, but yeah, Factory Records from Joy Division to Happy Mondays. This is a BBC thing, it originally came out on BBC Four. What? about 2009-ish and I wanted a physical copy of this it's never been out it's never come out and um, it wasn't available to rip anywhere particularly but then I'd noticed that YouTube had got it in sections on someone's YouTube channel so back when I had a PC that was capable of such a thing I downloaded each video each section from YouTube stitched them all together in an editing package. But the trouble with that was, there was a chunk from one of the videos, one of the sections missing because it was forced to be cut by the uploader due to copyright. Um, so it was an incomplete documentary. It was something like five, maybe even 10 minutes missing. Some years later, I managed to find someone, and I can't remember. All I remember is that it happened because there we go, there's a DVD-R, but it's not my writing that. So it's not my initial burned copy. It's from somewhere else. Someone had obviously sold this, and I wish I could remember who it was who furnished me with this copy that's got, you know, the full documentary on it. Decent quality, you know, it's a, it's still a bootleg, it's still an unofficial one. 
and it's a good documentary uh, they could have got into a lot more detail over certain things obviously but I do like factory records from Joy Division to Happy Mondays the BBC4 doc here's one that was a bit of a disappointment in fact it was a lot of a disappointment not so much for the content but just the production values on this are terrible they're just so shit and this is a documentary about Martin Hannett and um, it's got a bit of a cumbersome name for a documentary he wasn't just the fifth member of Joy Division a film about Martin Hannett's record producer musician scientific experimenter with sound um, I was expecting this to be a lot like Shadow Players it's not made by James Nice or LTM this is an Ozit and Morpheus Records and also Dandelion Records production and it says all material is copyright Chris Hewitt and then it gives a P.O. Box in Cheshire. I mean, you can tell it's sort of like a thing that's done on the cheap, just from sort of what is not a very aesthetically pleasing back cover here. The front's all right, I suppose. It shows a good picture of Martin Hannett. But the sound on this... Now, I'm someone who likes, nay needs my TV on pretty loud, but the sounding on this, for the most part, it's just so loud and then you get to bits where it suddenly goes a lot quieter you know this is something you basically have to sit and watch with a remote control in your hand and it's just frustrating because there's a lot of big names who get interviewed on this once again you get tony wilson bernard sumner peter hook mick middles another author of the manchester and factory scenes at uh, rennie from stone roses gets interviewed on this just the production on it is just appallingly bad it really is. I've only watched this once and I couldn't bear to watch it again. I think I ought to one day just to see if I'm remembering exactly how terrible it was. This could have been so much better, but ultimately it ended up being probably the worst thing in this whole collection here, just for how badly produced it is. Chris Hewitt, if you ever watch this, uh, let me know if this gets reissued with better production, much better sound. It's the sound that just kills it, really, because it's so inconsistent and way too loud in a lot of places. But there we are, the Martin Hannett documentary. Here's an interesting one. I'm trying to think where I found this. I think there was some New Order fan forum, and they were saying that this had come out, and it just intrigued me, and I did find a copy... I can't remember if it was eBay or Amazon, but it's Black Monday, and it's a fly-on-the-wall film, so kind of documentary, but it's got actual footage from on the day, taken on Monday the 23rd of November 1992, and over the subsequent days, charting factory records going into receivership. Oh, yeah, it's, um, I've only ever watched this once. Astonishingly, the running time is 2 hours 40 minutes, but I don't know if that includes the bonus items that are on here because chapter one and chapter two uh, chapter one is denials and receivership and chapter two the demise of the officers it's like you know like your old style 90s camcorder footage really a lot of it and then they managed to sort of grab tony wilson in the street and things like that uh, bonus items chapter three rebirth of the factory building as the fact 251 nightclub and chapter four the making of the anvil fact 73 um, you get to see some screenshots from this DVD there. Well, some are screenshots, and obviously that picture of the Happy Mondays is a proper post photo, so it's a little bit misleading, I suppose. Put that there as well. Um, yeah, it's an unusual one, this. It was quite interesting for a little while, but when it, a lot of it is just like a guy with a camcorder standing around a part of Manchester, really, just waiting for people to come in and out of an office building. It's interesting. Yeah, yeah. It's this kind of very mild recommendation from me, that one. Uh, next, we move on to some more Joy Division-specific DVDs here. Now, this one, I believe I got this on Discogs back when it was probably quite an early Discogs purchase for me, this back when they were not quite so gung-ho about people selling bootlegs and unofficial stuff like they are now. And I understand, you know, I'm not going to get bogged down into all that now. But this is certainly a bootleg. It's Here Are The Young Men and Substance from Joy Division. So Here Are The Young Men was um, 
sort of like a half documentary, half sort of showcase of Joy Division that came out in, uh, now did it come out before, yeah no it would have come out after Ian Curtis's death but quite soon after I think. I do apologise that my dates for some of these original releases aren't particularly very good but technically some of them were before my time. And then Substance following it, I can't remember if Substance here is an official thing because obviously New Order had Substance and then there was a video companion that came out a year later, 1988. And then Joy Division had a Substance compilation album issued in 1988, but I don't recall if there was a video companion to that. So I'm not sure if that's just someone kind of making up their own Joy Division Substance. Um, maybe I'll look it up and put it on screen. It's actually two discs, this. I forgot about that. So plenty on these. I think I only watched them once. And um, the quality varies. I don't think even the original here with the young men was particularly brilliant quality but that was kind of the point it was one of factory's filmmaking arms earlier projects really and it was meant to look kind of rough and ready i think for a lot of the time um yeah nothing really much else to say about that boring sleeve there the, the back cover looks a bit better and at least it shows you all the info well, i mentioned chrome dreams when i've shown you that new order audio documentary and i think this is a chrome dreams thing um, it doesn't have the Chrome Dreams logo or anything on it, but the production company on here is Sexy Intellectual, and I think they're some sort of subsidiary of Chrome Dreams because there's very similar sort of aesthetic. But this is under review by Joy Division. Uh, this has been out on Amazon Prime before, and it might still be. So this is something that theoretically it's quite easy for people to watch without buying the DVD. I'm glad I've got the DVD. Say it's an unofficial documentary. There's a fair amount of interviews with people. Review, comment, criticism and insight from Mick Middles, the author. John Robb, who's an author, musician, journalist. He's done all sorts. Uh, Lindsay Reid, who was, of course, Tony Wilson's ex-wife. And, uh, yeah, it's got footage of and comment on Joy Division's pivotal musical influences. Obscure footage rare interviews blah 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 it's good that 70 minutes it says it is I like that a lot an official joy division documentary did come out as those of us in the know no and here it is just called joy division yeah this got rave reviews when it came out in oh what's the year it'll say on here 2008 the copyright is for this so it might have been the previous year when it got a limited cinema release, presumably. But yeah, this is excellent, this. It's a good companion piece to Control. In fact, I think that was kind of the impetus for it, whereas Control was the fictionalised version, although very true to life for the most part, I believe. You know, this was an actual proper documentary, interviews with the members of New Order of the time. Um, Tony Wilson, this might have been the last thing Tony Wilson was involved in before he died, possibly. Correct me if I'm wrong, anybody. There again, this I think is still available on Amazon Prime to watch for free if you're a Prime member. So, a uh, big recommendation to go and do that if you don't want to get the DVD. I like physical media, especially when it comes to Joy Division and related. I like as much physical stuff as possible. So, of course, I'm not getting rid of my DVD here. But, um, yeah, fantastic stuff. Right, now we move on to all the New Order stuff. And believe it or not, there's a lot here. Some of it official, a lot of it not official. So let's just get going. First one is something that I had on VHS when I was a teenager. I played it to death and it was inevitable that I would upgrade to the DVD when that came out. And it is New Order Story. So this was out in 1993, I think broadcast on ITV originally. I wouldn't say it's the definitive New Order story, pun intended, for um, up till that point, but it's, I don't know, for me, there's just something like really evocative and absorbing about this. I felt quite heavy inside the case here, but that's because we've got this great big uh, booklet from I think Warner Home Video advertising a load of their stuff that would have come out at the time. It lists all the music videos that it plays on there but it's not just a music video compilation. Um, 
it's a documentary it's got this weird voice over um, in like a kind of mid-atlantic accent from Jenny Seagrove I think it is who I'm sure was putting on a weird accent for this obviously the cover is the same really as the Republic album from 93 so this feels like it should be a companion piece to that but it covers from Joy Division onwards really because the first two tracks on here are Joy Division performances. Directed by Kevin Hewitt and produced by Paul Morley. Yeah, Paul Morley can be a bit pretentious at times. He, of course, another one, a journalist, record producer. Um, he was partly responsible for ZTT Records and he's written a lot about Factory and other areas of music over the years. And you see him as a talking head on a lot of things. He does tend to go a little bit up his own backside for me sometimes, which this does admittedly, but I've just got fond memories because this was, I don't think it was the first New Order video that I got when I was a teen. I've got the best of New Order VHS as well, which I don't have anymore by the way. Got rid of that many, many years ago. But I just remember playing the videotape loads. I don't think there's much in the way of extras on here from what I remember. In fact, I don't think there is any extras. Doesn't matter though, because I love that. So, New Order Story. Here's New Order a Collection. So, this is uh, very comprehensive, at least up till 2005, 2006, collection of New Order's promo videos. So, it starts with Confusion, which sounds weird, but bear in mind there wasn't official promo videos for Ceremony, Blue Monday, even. Well, there kind of was for Blue Monday, but it was a weird computer generated thing. Anyway, I'm not going to get bogged down in the finer details. But yeah, from Confusion all the way to Waiting for the Siren's Call from the album of the same name. And there's alternate versions of certain videos like the USA Patty version of Round and Round, the Baywatch set performance of Regret, which was essentially a Top of the Pops satellite performance, a uh, different version of the Crystal video, and then it's got some live stuff from Paris and Beijing, Ceremony and Temptation. It's got a performance of Temptation from 1981, and it says it's from the 316 video slash DVD, which I do have and I'll show you shortly. Yeah, very nice collection, this. There again, another one with the big Buy All Our Stuff catalog in there from Warner Music. Nice little booklet there with a brief essay by Michael Schamberg who worked with New Order and Factory a lot in the 80s. If you want most of New Order's videos, obviously nothing sort of 2011 onwards, the best quality that you can get, then yeah, that's worth looking out for. I don't think it's too expensive on the aftermarket. This one is an unofficial DVD. I think this is another one. I might have bought this on Discogs, actually. Very early Discogs purchase again for me. And it's a visual history of Joy Division and New Order. Uh, most of it's New Order, but the first four things, I think, are uh, Joy Division performances. It's sort of collecting a lot of videos, for, so there's some repetition here, but also there's other TV performances, like, for instance, there's a TV performance from 87 of True Faith from Top of the Pops. There's some live in Montreux performances from 1993, Everyone Everywhere, which does feature on New Order Story but also True Faith and Ruined in a Day, which don't feature on that. So this kind of is nice to get for those sort of rarer clips. Some Later with Jules Holland performances, more Top of the Pops, uh, bonus 1988 BBC documentary about Joy Division involving into New Order. I forgot that was on. Uh, it says excellent quality on it, so uh, <laughs> believe what it says, I suppose. Uh, two hours. I think I got this just for kind of the extras, really. It even has the original 1983 computer-generated Blue Monday video that the official collection that I just showed you doesn't. That was all right. I don't know where you get it from now, because I'm sure this won't be allowed to be sold on Discogs, but um, it's logged on Discogs because it's in my collection on there. Uh, it's on we go to... Ah, now then. This is the first of a load of DVDs, and they kind of all mixed up, so I'm not going to show them all in a row, but the first of a lot of DVDs that 
I imported from America. I'm trying to remember the name of the company, but I was using them loads for so much new order, you know, bootlegs and unofficial DVDs. And this is one that I got. There again, it's quite similar to that transmission DVD, really, where it's basically TV performances. So we've got stuff from Granada TV, uh, Truth Procession Ceremony, and then um, it doesn't know what the other three tracks are, and I can't remember. Um, I'm sure I'd know them when I watch this again, but it's been so many years. Uh, a couple of performances from Old Grey Whistle Test, or I think it was just called Whistle Test by 1985. Two performances from The Tube, one from The Roxy, although it says that was in Brisbane, Australia, so I don't know if that is the UK Roxy or whether Australia had a different show called The Roxy, but it was still about music, I don't know. Something called New Beat from Brixton Academy, there's three performances from that. Thieves Like Us and Blue Monday from Top of the Pops in the early 80s, I've seen them so many times. Stuff from BBC Studios, but it doesn't say, it's kind of, it's a little bit haphazard this and all over the place, but um, it's, it's interesting enough. I quite like the cover of it, it's, although it's very basic. Um, Jillian's wearing a lovely pair of boots there. <laughs> Unusual one that, but I'm glad I've got it, I'm glad I've got all of these. Another one from this company, and it never has their name, their website name or production company name, but it was a site that had just so many, and it wasn't just New Order, it was just any band you could think of. Just a catalogue of live gigs on DVD mainly, and some of these sort of like TV compilations as well. Um, all sorts, um, I'm assuming the site has closed down long ago, it's been many years since I last used them, but I did use them a lot for a while. Uh, more TV appearances here, uh, very sort of low res cover this. What I did like about the company, what I meant to mention by the way, was um, to keep costs down, they would send just the DVD, and it was always a nicely printed DVD-R, and the cover, but no case. So you'd have to buy your own cases, so I think at some point I chose to buy a job lot of these really nice bright red DVD cases, which I think work really well actually. I kind of wish I'd got more of them. I mean, this isn't a very good example of a decent cover because this is just like really sort of grimy and low res, but um, still an interesting watch with other stuff that wasn't on anything previously or subsequently. Yeah, um, there we go. This is an official DVD, but one that only came out in Japan. Pumped full of drugs. Now then, I think that I might have this twice now, because I've got a feeling that this performance, which was from Japan in 1985, it'll be on the Low Life Definitive Edition DVD, um, and I never bothered watching it because I've got this, so I've got this twice now. Um, perhaps I'll maybe send this out as some VCLT to someone, if anyone wants this. Um, just let me check that I've definitely already got it twice now. But I might send this out. I bought this from Amazon Japan, actually. You can see all the proper Japan stuff there. So it's official, this. But for some reason, um, only for the Japanese market, really. But plays well. It's region 3, I think. No, it's actually region 2. I didn't think Japan was region 2, but perhaps they are. I don't know. I don't know. Do people even worry about DVD regions anymore? It's a good gig, that. Unusual, because the, the crowd, the Japanese audience, do seem a little bit kind of reserved at times, but I think that's just kind of their culture and, and their behaviour, really, how they are. Oh, it's got the uh, more specific details on the front. New Order, May the 2nd, 1985, Shinjuku Kozenenkin Hall, Tokyo, pumped full of drugs. I don't think that was particularly expensive, even though it was imported from Japan. And I think this was shortly before I discovered Discogs when I got this, so I probably would have been able to get this from somewhere a lot closer to home for a bit cheaper on Discogs Marketplace, because I think this is still widely available for sale, or relatively widely on there because it's an official thing so it's not been banned from being sold. Alright we move on to an official one, New Order 81, Reading Festival 98 and In Conversation. It's New Order 316 is the title you can see on the spine there. Uh, so it's got the 1981 
Taras Shevchenko performance uh, reissued and presumably touched up a little bit for the DVD market. That was from a venue in, it was the Ukrainian National Home, I think, in New York. And I think the version of Temptation that they perform on there is the first time they ever performed that live. It would have been, surely, because 81 was early for a track like Temptation. And then also, it's not an extra, it's just the other feature on this, is the Reading Festival, 30th of August, 98 performance, which was basically their comeback after five years of not really doing anything together. Another advertising catalogue type thing. I remember having Taras Shevchenko on video when I was younger. I don't think it was a standalone release, or was it? It might have been. I know when I bought this DVD, when I upgraded, um, I know I'd seen Taras Shevchenko, the Ukrainian National Home gig before. Um, so it might have been a standalone thing on video, I can't remember. My memory's starting to falter and uh, not do me any great service anymore. Another official one is New Order 511, and this is the performance on the 9th of June 2002 from Finsbury Park, London. This dates it as it's got the PlayStation 2 compatible logo there above all the technical bump. Yeah, there's a few sort of excerpts and interviews as extras on here. Decent gig from what I remember of this. You know, I've so much of this, it's been years since I've, I've watched it. And some of it I've only seen the once anyway. Um, but it covers, you know, everything up till the get ready period of 2001-2002. This one, Live Mission. I think I got this there again. It was on Discogs, I'm sure it was. And it's a gig from 2005. I'm trying to find where it was. Weirdly, it doesn't look like it says where this was filmed. I would have thought I would have the information somewhere. And if I have, I'll put it on screen. Uh, it's got a fairly good little biography of New Order on the back. And I think this is semi-official. It was. It seems to have got like a proper release somewhere in Europe, certainly. And that's no doubt where I got it imported from. I just wish it would say where the gig was. I'm going to have to look that up. And as I say, you will have seen it on screen if I could find out the information. It's obviously going into the Waiting for the Sirens Call era. And it does feature Jetstream with Animatronic. And World in Motion with Keith Allen. So... A pretty big gig if they're able to get the special guests in, I suppose. It looks a little bit sort of edited down and truncated, actually. I wonder if they've taken stuff off this. I don't know. Unusual one, that. An official release here, live in Glasgow. And I believe I bought this and then I upgraded my copy because I wanted a HMV exclusive version that's got a CD in it. So let me just check that I'm not completely telling you a load of bull there. Yes, although it looks like it's only one disc. If you get the top one out, in fact the top two, very weird packaging actually. I sort of see what they've done, but you see you get a Live in Glasgow CD at the bottom, and that's the only place, to the best of my knowledge, that this ever came out on CD was within this, what I think was a HMV exclusive DVD set. So this is technically a three disc set, two DVDs and one CD. Not the greatest packaging, but live in Glasgow, the date of it, uh, it's going to be 2005 or 2006, because it's got tracks from Waiting for the Sirens Call, but it's got quite a bit of rare and unseen footage on it. I mean, not all of it's unseen, certainly, uh, but it's got performances from something called Celebration 1981, so that was an early thing, Glastonbury 81, Rome 1982, Cork 1983, Rotterdam 85, Toronto 85, Shoreline 1989 and Hyde Park Wireless which may have been early 2000s, it doesn't give a year for that for some reason. So it's an awful lot on that, if you can find the version that's got the CD in as well, you know, because I don't like to think there's a New Order album out there that I haven't got, so when I realised that there was an edition of this that came with a CD, I had to pick it up, and I think it was a little bit pricey, not outrageously so, but I sold my other copy and got this one, because it had the CD. More bootlegs, I think. 
Although this one may have been another Discogs purchase rather than from that website that I wish I could remember the name of that I used so much kind of seven, eight years ago. In Music Festival, and it's just got everything in um, Portuguese, I think. In Music Festival would have been, I want to say Brazil. It looks like it's a Brazilian release, this, and the In Music Festival was a Brazilian event. I can't really read a lot of what's on the back because it's all in Portuguese, but 2012, this will be sort of into their comeback, you know, when Gillian Gilbert returned. Um, and Tom Chapman had replaced Peter Hook on bass. Um, so yeah, the current, the modern era of New Order from 2011 onwards. It's from a Brazilian festival, I think. Some of these concerts can be a bit much of a muchness, really. So, you know, we've got another one here. This is a Serbian one. This one, as you can tell, because I use my own red DVD case, because I was only sent the DVD itself and the cover. This one is from 2012 in Novi Sad, Serbia. So yeah, I'll get through these relatively quickly. You know, they're all very similar. They're all really well produced because they're essentially rips from local TV. You know, you often see the TV networks on-screen graphic on them. So there's nothing wrong with the quality of these at all. They're just not really official issues really it's just what someone's taped off the telly there again we've got another one uh coachella now and this annoys me this sleeve like i say the one thing i didn't like about this company was sometimes their sleeves they'd either be pretty low res and pretty rubbish or they'd just be inaccurate for instance coachella here it's got a picture of peter hook on the front well peter hook had left new order years before this doesn't say what Coachella, but I'm assuming it's... Oh, it does, sorry. Uh, 14th of April, 2013. And it, this apparently was ripped from a webcast. But yeah, that's just annoying me, really. And it annoyed me at the time, and still does now, that they've put a picture of Peter Hook on there when he wasn't in New Order by that point. Lollapalooza. Um, 6th of April, oh Lollapalooza Brazil, so another Brazilian thing, assuming the earlier one was Brazilian. Uh, 2014, it does give you the dates on these, which is pretty handy. That's not a bad cover, really. A lot of these have similar set lists, they do vary to an extent, but you know, all the old favourites are always played, you know, your Blue Mondays, Perfect Kisses, Bizarre Love Triangle. Interestingly, World, which is one of my favourite New Order singles, um, and doesn't often get an outing live. That was performed here, so that was a nice treat, certainly. On to... We've not got too many more to go now. On to Sonar 2016. This is a bizarre cover. Look at that. That's strange. Apologies if there's been a lot of glare on these DVDs in this video, by the way. Not a lot I can do about it. This was on the Saturday 18th of June in Barcelona. Another sort of outdoor festival to the best of my remembrance. Obviously these sort of being, you know, 2011 onwards are all, you know, modern era, new order. And even to up to this day, you know, when they tour and they're playing a lot of these sort of glorified greatest hit sets. But um, I do hope for a new album at some point. I think we all do. 91 minutes in length. All of these DVDs are region free, by the way. Um, any kind of technical stuff I kind of take with a pinch of salt, really. Whether it's a PAL DVD or really an NTSC one, I'd have thought it was NTSC, but it doesn't really make any difference, um, at least these days in the modern age. Here is Glastonbury. Oh, we know Glastonbury. This was ripped from BBC iPlayer, 25th of June, 2016, so my 36th birthday. And don't I feel old, because that only feels like yesterday. Nice front cover, the back's a little bit more basic, but it does its job. It looks all right, sort of spine first as well. Uh, I don't know what that K's for. I don't think that's got anything to do with the company who I got these from. I don't know, if that means anything to anybody, then fair enough, but it doesn't to me but a lot of these have this K on the spine. I don't think it's anything sort of pertaining to a form of certification either, because these are bootlegs. They're not going to be certified. All right, just two more to go now, and it's two more um, 
of a similar vein, so I'll get through them quickly. Ross Kilder Festival, uh, 2016 again, 2nd of July. That's about all I can say about it. There again, another annoying one. Look at that, they've got Peter Hulk on it again. So I was about to give it a compliment that this is quite a nice cover, and then I noticed they've got Hooky on it. Hooky was not a member, he left New Order. It was almost 10 years by that point. You know, come on. And finally, last one is another Coachella from 2017. So this is the most recent New Order concert. Um, I d oh god, he's got hooky on it again, look. <laughs> I'm getting really annoyed at I thought there was only one, I remembered one in particular had Peter Hook on. I forgot it with three of the bloody things. Oh dear. Coachella, Sunday April 16th, 2017, it was ripped from the webcast. Right, me in the future is just jumping in and interrupting this part of the video because during editing I realised that there was three New Order DVDs that I'd missed and the reason I'd missed them, I'd forgotten about them was because I keep these with all my New Order CDs because these are technically singles or DVD singles to be precise so three that came out, three singles from New Order on DVD it was first Crystal and I wish I'd put my glasses on here it's got the video on it obviously, it has got audio tracks as well, Behind Closed Doors is on there. Temptation, a video filmed for the 2002 Commonwealth Games in Manchester. And then performances of Isolation and True Faith from Reading 98. And then the second single from Get Ready was 60 miles an hour. So another DVD single here, still got the hype sticker on it. What's this got on it? Um, it's got the video for 60 miles an hour and also audio of the radio edit for 60 miles and the track Sabotage. And then the last DVD single New Order released, I think, was Here To Stay from 24 Hour Party People. So this has got the video as track one and then audio of the radio edit track two and the Felix the House Cat Extended Glitz Mix for track three. And then track four is another video track. It's four 30 second clips from the feature film aforementioned earlier on in this video. So that's all the DVDs, I'm pretty sure. I've not forgotten any. They did release promo videos and clips on other CD singles, but they're not DVD, so I'm not counting them. Um, I've also got the CD video single, which is basically like a shrunk down laser disc format for True Faith in 1987, but that doesn't really qualify. You never know, I might get to show it to you in another similar kind of video. But anyway, this was just meant to be a brief interruption from future me, now back to past me. So that was my new order and also Joy Division and Factory Records related DVDs, quite a large collection. If you like concerts and festival gigs, you know, I've got loads of those. The best stuff is, you know, the 24 hour party people control the official documentaries, you know, Joy, the Joy Division one, New Order story. Once you get to the concerts, you know, they're all sort of pretty samey after a while, really, but they're nice to have. Uh, this is a collection that I've been meaning to show on the channel for a long time now and um, I hope that you enjoyed seeing it. I know there's one or two New Order and Joy Division fans out there who do watch the channel, so do let me know in the comments uh, what you thought of all of this. Um, if is there anything you've got that I haven't got, you know, I do like to be a completist with New Order, so uh, do let me know. But thank you all for watching, with special thanks that go to my wonderful subscribers and generous patrons. I was thinking about doing a video about my New Order bootleg CDs, but I don't know. Let me know, I would like some feedback on that, because that would be even more samey than a lot of what these DVDs were. It's just, you know, oh here's a CD of a gig from 1980, here's one from 81, another from 81, blah 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 blah. Repeat to fade really. Um, but let me know if uh, you would like to see those because there again they've all got custom or you know nice covers for them and um, it is a collection that I spent a lot of time and money on at one point really not long before I switched really to collecting more mini discs and then onto vinyl records 
but if people would like to see my new order bootleg live concerts on CD then let me know and I'll try and get that video done at some point I can't say when but it will happen if people want it but I'm gonna go now and please will you join me again for my next DVD collection and Joy Division new order factory records related video whatever the hell that might end up being cheers everyone See ya!